Class 8, Science, Chapter 16 Light Animated Science, Introduction Hello, my dear friends. How are you all today? I am the great Italian scientist, Galileo Galilei. I have come back in time to tell you all about light. I have produced telescopes with around 30x magnification. These telescopes help me discover the four largest moons orbiting Jupiter, later named the Galilean satellites. I also reside in Jupiter nowadays. I am here today to tell you about light, the laws of reflection of light, regular and diffused reflection, etc. We will also learn about the inside of our eye and care to be taken for our eyes. Hey, do you see the sun today? It is indeed a bright day. The sun is a luminous object which emits light all around us. This light is in the form of energy which travels through infinite media. Light can also travel through a vacuum. It is this light that makes things around us visible. We also know that there are some objects that do not give out light of their own. Such objects are called non-luminous objects. They just reflect light that falls on them. The light makes things visible when light from an object enters our eye that we see the object. The light may have been emitted by the object or reflected by it. Let me first tell you about reflection and two important laws of reflection. Reflection of light When a ray of light hits a mirror or any polished surface, it bounces off the surface. This phenomenon is called reflection of light. The light ray that falls on a mirror is called the incident light ray. The ray that comes back from the surface after reflection is called the reflection light ray. The point where the incident ray strikes the reflecting surface is called the point of incidence. A line drawn perpendicular to the mirror at the point of incidence is the normal. The angle between the normal and incident ray is called angle of incidence, angle I. The angle between the normal and reflected ray is known as the angle of reflection, angle R, shown in the figure. Laws of Reflection According to the laws of reflection, the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection, that is, angle I is equal to angle R. The incidence ray, the normal at the point of incidence, and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. Do you know the first two laws of reflection remain the same regardless of the shape of the mirror used? However, the characteristics of the image formed, that is, the size of the image, whether it is upright or inverted, as compared to the object, etc., may vary depending on the type of mirror used. Look at your image in a hollow of a shiny spoon and then in a dressing mirror. You will observe that you look different in both the cases. Image formed in the hollow of the spoon, real and diminished. Image formed by a plain mirror, virtual, erect and same size as that of the object. Let's summarize the characteristics of an image formed by a plane that is flat mirror. Characteristics of image formed by a plane mirror. The image size and object size is the same. The image formed is upright or erect, virtual behind the mirror. The distance of the image from the mirror equals the distance of the object from the mirror. The image undergoes a left-right inversion called a lateral inversion. Hey, do you understand what exactly lateral inversion of image is? Lateral inversion of image. Write your name on a sheet of paper and hold it in front of a mirror. What do you see? You will see that your name has been completely reversed. This happens because the reflected image undergoes left-right inversion, also called lateral inversion. Hey, do you know 
When we look at ourselves in a rough surface, we can see a hazy image of ourselves. Whereas, when we look at a shiny, polished surface, we can see a clear image of ourselves. Let's find out the reason behind this. Types of Reflection Parallel or Regular Reflection A polished surface reflects a parallel beam of light in one direction. This type of reflection is called Regular Reflection. Diffused or Irregular Reflection A rough surface reflects a parallel beam of light in many directions. This type of reflection is called Diffused Reflection. Do you know, is your reflection in a brand new plate different from your reflection in an old plate? Yes, it is different. The old plate will have a rough surface. You know that we can only get a diffused reflection from a rough surface. Hence, the image formed will not be very clear. On the other hand, a brand new plate will have a shiny surface. It will give a parallel reflection, hence forming a clear image. Hey, when I look into the kaleidoscope, I can see multiple patterns. This makes me wonder whether this is due to a combination of more than one mirror used in the kaleidoscope. In a kaleidoscope, beautiful patterns are formed due to multiple reflections. Let's find out more. Formation of multiple images If a reflected light ray is reflected again on being incident on another surface, it is termed multiple reflection. By varying the angles between two mirrors, we can get any number of images. Let us see how a combination of plane mirror works. If we keep two mirrors at an angle of 90 degree to each other, we will get three images. As we decrease the angle between the mirrors, the number of images increases. When two mirrors are parallel to each other, angle O, we get an infinite number of images. Multiple reflections are used in periscopes. Periscopes are used in submarines, war tanks and by soldiers in bunkers to see objects that are not visible directly. In a barber's shop, we see the back of the head using multiple reflections of two mirrors. In a kaleidoscope, beautiful patterns are formed due to multiple reflections. I was wondering if you know that the sunlight which appears white is actually white or it is made of several colors. Let's find out. Sunlight made of several colors. The sunlight that appears white light to us is not white at all. It is made up of seven colors. That is, vidgyo, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. Let us understand this with a simple activity. When a beam of light is made to pass through a prism, it splits up into a band of seven colors called a spectrum. This process of splitting of white light into its constituent colors is called dispersion. A rainbow is a natural phenomenon showing dispersion. Have you ever wondered how our eye is able to see the beautiful world around us? What does it have that enables to distinguish colors and see things from far? Let's take a closer look at the structure of the eye. Structure of the eye We see objects around us with our eyes. The eye is an important sense organ. The human eye is roughly spherical in shape. Outer coat of the eye is white. It is tough so that it can protect the interior of the eye from accidents. Its transparent front part is called the cornea. Behind the cornea, there is a muscular structure called the iris. The iris is the part of that eye which gives it its distinctive color. When we say that a person has green eyes, we refer actually to the color of the iris. The iris controls the amount of light entering into the eye. There is a small opening in the iris whose size can be controlled and is called the pupil. The iris controls the amount of light entering the eye. Behind the pupil, the eye has a lens, which is thicker in the middle. In the figure, the lens focuses light on the back of the eye, on a layer called retina. 
it consists of nerve cells. Sensations felt by the nerve cells are then transmitted to the brain through the optic nerve. There are two kinds of nerve cells in the retina. Cones, which are sensitive to bright light, cones sense color. Rods, which are sensitive to dim light. The small region where the optic nerve and the retina meet has no sensory cells and is called the blind spot. Sometimes, particularly in old age, eyesight becomes foggy. It is due to the eye lens becoming cloudy. When it happens, persons are said to have cataract. There is a loss of vision, sometimes extremely severe. It is possible to treat this defect. The opaque lens is removed and a new artificial lens is inserted. Modern technology has made this procedure simpler and safer. Do you know? The impression of an image does not vanish immediately from the retina. It persists there for about one sixteenth of a second. So, if still images of a moving object are flashed on the eye, at the rate faster than 16 per second, then the eye perceives this object as moving. The minimum distance at which the eye can see objects distinctly varies with age. The most comfortable distance at which one can read with a normal eye is about 25 centimeters. Our eye help us see the beautiful world around us, so we must take a proper care of them. Care of the eyes. It is necessary that you take proper care of your eyes. If there is any problem, you should go to an eye specialist. Have regular checkups. If advised, use suitable spectacles. Too little or too much light is bad for eyes. Insufficient light causes eye strain and headaches. Too much light, like that of the sun, a powerful lamp or a laser torch, can injure the retina. Do not look at the sun or a powerful light directly. Never rub your eyes. If particles of dust go into your eyes, wash your eyes with clean water. If there is no improvement, go to a doctor. Wash your eyes frequently with clean water. Always read at the normal distance for vision. Do not read by bringing your book too close to your eyes or keeping it too far. Did you know? Animals have eyes shaped in different ways. Eyes of a crab are quite small, but they enable the crab to look around. So, the crab can sense even if the enemy approaches from behind. Butterfly has large eyes that seem to be made of thousands of little eyes. It can see not only in the front and the sides, but the back as well. A night bird or an owl can see very well in the night, but not during the day. Daylight birds like kite or eagle can see very well during the day, but not in the night. They have more cones and fewer rods. The owl has a large cornea and a large pupil to allow more light in its eye. Also, it has on its retina a large number of rods and only a few cones. There are certain visually challenged people who can read and write. How is it possible for them to read and write? Let's find out. Visually challenged persons can read and write. Some persons, including children, can be visually handicapped. They have very limited vision to see things. Some persons cannot see at all since birth. Some persons may lose their eyesight because of a disease. Such persons try to identify things by touching and listening to voices more carefully. They develop their other senses more sharply. However, additional resources can enable them to develop their capabilities further. Do you know? Resource for the visually challenged people can be of two types, non-optical aids and optical aids. Non-optical aids include visual aids, tactual aids using the sense of touch, auditory aids using the sense of hearing, and electronic aids. 
visual aids can magnify words, can provide suitable intensity of light and material at proper distances. Tactual aids including braille writer slate and stylus help the visually challenged persons in taking notes, reading and writing. Auditory aids include cassettes, tape recorders, talking books and other such devices. Electronic aids such as talking calculators are also available for performing many computational tasks. Closed circuit television also an electronic aid enlarges printed material with suitable contrast and illumination. Nowadays use of audio CDs and voice boxes with computers are also very helpful for listening to and writing the desired text. Optical aids include bifocal lenses, contact lenses, tinted lenses, magnifiers and telescopic aids. While the lens combinations are used to rectify visual limitations Telescopic aids are available to view chalkboard and class demonstrations. You all must have heard about the Braille system. It was developed by Louis Braille. Louis Braille, himself a visually challenged person, developed a system for visually challenged persons and published it in 1821. This system is called the Braille system. Let's understand what it is. Braille system the most popular resource for visually challenged persons is known as Braille. The present system was adopted in 1932. There is Braille code for common languages, mathematics and scientific notation. Many Indian languages can be read using the Braille system. Braille system has 63 dot patterns or characters. Each character represents a letter, a combination of letters, a common word or a grammatical sign. Dots are arranged in cells of two vertical rows of three dots each. Patterns of dots to represent some English alphabets and some common words are shown below. These patterns when embossed on braille sheets help visually challenged to recognize words by touching. To make them easier to touch, the dots are raised slightly. Visually challenged people learn the braille system by beginning with letters, then special characters and letter combinations. Methods depend upon recognition by touching. Each character has to be memorized. Braille text can be produced by hand or by machine. Typewriter like devices and printing machines have now been developed. Do you know some visually challenged Indians have great achievements to their credit? Divakar, a child prodigy, has given amazing performances as a singer. Mr. Ravindra Jain, born completely visually challenged, obtained his Sangeet Prabhakar degree from Allahabad. He has shown his excellence as a lyricist, singer and music composer. Mr. Lal Advani, himself visually challenged, established an association for special education and rehabilitation of disabled in India. Besides, he represented India on Braille problems to UNESCO. Helen Keller, the most well-known and inspiring visually challenged person. Helen Keller, an American author and lecturer, lost her sight when she was only 18 months old. But because of her resolve and courage, she could complete her graduation from a university. She wrote a number of books, including The Story. Hey, it's time for me to go back to Jupiter. Bye-bye. See ya.